Rugby World Cup 2023, folks. Quarterfinal number four, South Africa against France. One of the best games I think I've ever seen, especially that first half, was insane. Um, what can I say? I need a drink. Not even my team's playing in this one. I thought the All Blacks and Ireland game was intense, but bloody hell. Um, South Africa get the job done by one point. 28, France, 29, South Africa. We'll go through some key events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts, man. But geez, that South African line speed is brutal. Their work under the high ball, phenomenal. Um, France scored three pretty sweet tries in the first half through their forwards, but none in the second. And uh, yeah, despite the support of the crowd, South African scrum got on top despite having less ball. Yeah, they did bloody well, man. Um, my heart now wants a South African All Blacks final, but we've still got Argentina and England certainly still in the race. Um, interestingly, France early were doing those little dinks through, getting themselves some good field position. I thought they started the game the better of the two sides, easily. I mean, that good field position from Ramos's little kicks, they put a massive maul, it went close, they got themselves some advantage, Dupont to Pinot to buy out on the right wing, the big loose head. He gets the first try of the game after, like, what was it, three, four minutes? Unbelievable start from France, 7-0. Malvaka had a massive line break. He was looking dangerous. Dante had gone close. And then maybe a good momentum shifter for South Africa because they were under the pump, looking a bit lost at sea, all at sea. Evan Etzebeth uh, gets in the way, like an intercept attempt uh, out on the right wing. He kind of gets his hand, tries to claw it back, but um, nothing doing. A French crowd didn't like that one, but they're never going to like anything as the home crowd that the South Africans are doing. It certainly disrupts the play enough. And, uh, yeah, potentially stops the French from getting a quick-fire double. But, uh, yeah, the opposite kind of happens. Not long after that intervention, we get the first try from South Africa. Kurtley Aronsa, I don't know how many runs he had in this game. I should have looked it up before I started, but not many. But this one that he gets is pretty sweet. Turnover ball uh, leads to a Reinach box kick. And there's that man Eben again. Who pops up. He doesn't really get a hand on the ball. But the French didn't handle the high balls well at all in this game. And I think it was the game against Australia earlier. Was it this year that they, they struggled with the same thing? Clearly the South Africans took note. Because Evan all he did was contest it. Tried to tap it back. Didn't even get it. It came off Fiku. Goes backwards. Aronsa snatches it. Loose ball. Punishes. Bam. All of a sudden. Seven points apiece. The conversion. I wasn't convinced it was going to go over. But Marty Libach got the thing. And how important was that conversion in the scheme of things? Seven points apiece. Then Kitsov concedes a penalty for coming into the side. France take a long shot at goal. It's ever so short. And again. Imagine if that kick goes over. Obviously the whole game changes. But just short. Then Libach puts in a big up and under. He's become a theme of the game for a while that France struggled with. Big up and under. Uh, Wokey knocks it back, but only into the hands of Dale Ender, who runs through and grabs it. Nobody tackles him. He just kind of shimmies. Half looks like he's going to run right. There's like four French guys around him, and he's just like, all right, I'm just going to run straight. It's what Damien Dale Ender does best. He runs straight. He goes bloody close. They do tackle him short. Another phase, and then Damien Dale Ender, just like a good loose forward that he almost is, uh, he's able to go over a couple of phases later, one or two phases. The second phase after he makes that initial close run. So, missed conversion there. Probably should have got that one. But 12 points to 7. After being kind of rattled early, South Africa are well back into this one. Two tries from high balls over the top. 21 minutes though, France go through some phases. They come back in the game. Kulisi, bloody close to getting a turnover. And he's hitting every ruck, making every other tackle seemingly. France get advantage. They go through some phases. They get advantage again. And then this time, Dupont... I don't know, it's just like, I'm just going to tap it. Before anyone can react, he taps it. He gets it wide. Malvaka is able to go over in the corner. Great thinking from the French captain. There was doubts about him, uh, but he still played pretty well, didn't he? 12 points apiece. Key point in that one, it doesn't become 14-12 because Cheslin Colby charges down the Ramos conversion. Who knows whether he would have got it, but look at that scoreline. How important is that Colby charge down? Unbelievable. The gas on that guy to run as far as he did. Because it was from the sideline. He had to run a mile. Charged him down easily. Easily charged him down as well. So a big missed chance for, for Ramos to put his side in front. And then you just see the line speed from South Africa. Just causing havoc with the French attack. Um, France for some, for some loose ball. Because of that line speed, 
means that South Africa can once again gather it. Uh, Peter Steff, I think, flicks it out to Creel. Creel puts the boot through for Colby. And you're not going to catch Chisholm Colby. You've just seen his pace with that charge down. Um, so South Africa go back out in front, 19 points to 12. But the game, honestly, the first half was maybe the craziest half of rugby, at least in recent memory. France pushed pretty much straight back. I mean, they were unlucky when there was a bounce of a ball that went uh, too high for them. I mean, Marty Libok was in, kind of tracking back. It was too high for him. They went close. And then there was a kick through uh, for Penno, which Colby managed to kind of sweep back. So they had a couple of chances. South Africa exit, but only as far as their 22. France attack again. They get them all going. And um, eventually the Fords are able to power over. Uh, Bayer gets his second of the game. So we go to 19 points apiece. Then we get, I think, the first scrum penalty of the game on 37 minutes, which goes South Africa's way. And that scrum, if memory serves, because I was checking a chat, I was checking the chat at the time, doing the live stream, um, was from a mark. They kicked it into the South African 22. Willems have marked it, and they just called for a scrum. That never happens. But then that scrum gets a penalty, so it's a brilliant bit of a bit of play. They backed their scrum to get penalties, and it did. But it did slightly go wrong for South Africa right before halftime because there's head-on-head contact with Eben Etzebeth. Now, I looked at it and thought, man, he's, he's bending pretty low. So he should be able to get off with a bit of mitigation. And fortunately for the game, because I would have been... This game didn't deserve to have 14 on 15 for an extended period because it was just that high level. Um, they said in the start of the second half, it was mostly the energy going through the shoulder, glancing blow to the head. So just a yellow for Eber. But it does mean that South Africa can see the penalty, which France slot. So it's a 22-19 lead at half time, And South Africa have to play the second half, the first almost 10 minutes of it with a man down. France have had 59% possession, 70% territory, and um, they're only three points ahead. They've had six clean breaks to three. But interestingly, the run meters are 260 to 208 to South Africa because they've just been getting these turnover balls and bam, three meters. So yeah, hit you on the break, man. Crazy stuff. Uh, second half starts, like I mentioned, the yellow card stays yellow. DuPont has a nice wee snipe in the left wing, which kind of comes out of nowhere. That's what he can do. But the second half is different from the first. There's only the one try in the second half after having such a kind of really back and forth first half with tries. This game was more like big line breaks, big turnovers, uh, big tackles in the second half, less than kind of tries. Like France did manage to win a scrum, scrum penalty in the South African half. They opted for three, which was 25-19. Curtly uh, Arons, uh beat BLBRA to a high ball at one point, which meant South Africa had a big chance. Quaka Smith comes on, has a big carry. He's stronger than he looks, but then France won a penalty at the breakdown to get themselves out of jail. But then Jalibert from the resulting kick, did he kick it backwards? It was almost directly sideways or potentially backwards. That is the worst touch finder I think I've ever seen that actually found touch. Like sometimes guys, they kick it dead too far or they don't find touch, but that was just awful. Not what you need during a uh, Rugby World Cup quarterfinal. Uh, DuPont has to box kick it when they get the resulting line out to exit, but then Colby runs it straight back at you. You don't want him running back at you from a kick. Uh, they go close, but they end up knocking it on. But then from the resulting scrum, so they have to get a penalty. It's crazy. South Africa, though, when they get a, when they get that penalty six meters out, they get a line out. And South Africa's line out is pretty good. But then Stamen can't quite handle it. Oli Vaughan's able to just kind of snaffle it. He didn't even jump. He just one-handed, just won it back after the ball was loose. And then um, the other direction, Oli Vaughan's getting a big bit of space and Fafta Kluk ankle taps him. That means he knocks it on as he goes to ground. He just hits the deck and knocks it on. That knock on from an ankle tap leads to a scrum. That scrum leads to a South African advantage, which leads to a line break up the field. That's the advantage over because they've line breaked it up the field. They've got the territory. But then um, the South African chasers just swarm the French guys who can see the penalty. And South Africa, go for a tap. How do you go for a tap in a World Cup quarterfinal when it's 66 minutes and you got three points right in front of you? And it pays off. It's a bold call. Unbelievable. They go for a tap. It's this little set move. It was almost like American football with the guys kind of switching. Um, but yeah, they tap it, they go. 
And then how on earth did Ebenezer Beth, he just looked like a giant playing with children, going over, towering with these guys, trying to snatch at him. They can't stop him, but three of them. Uh, they can't bring him down. It's like Jali Bear and Fiku. They, they can't stop him. Unbelievable. Uh, so South Africa go in front, 26 points to 25. What a bold call, man. Given the scoreline in this game, I was thinking go for the three, but I was wrong. That was unbelievable. South African line speed continues to earn more penalties. Kwaka gets one, and then uh, Pollard steps up and slots a 53-metre penalty. 29-25, and at that moment, I'm thinking, man, France might be done here. All of the momentum is with South Africa, but France were not done. They got their own breakdown penalty a few minutes later, made it 28 points to 29. That's the final score. But they still weren't done. South Africa put on some more pressure. Colby went for a drop goal, which was wide. And then Ramos with the restart from the 22 dropout just kicks it out of the full. Again, not a mistake you want to be making in a World Cup quarterfinal. Um, Faf tried to milk a penalty when he passed it into a French player. Ben O'Keefe says, you did that on purpose, so nothing to do with there. Um, France has still got a scrum. They put on a pretty sweet scrum move where they went blindside with both the wingers out there. Big old line break. I think it was uh, Makalu who had a carry. But they end up leaving the ball behind, which means South African ball with a bit of time to play. Oh, it's reminiscent of the yesterday's game where France just had to chase it. South Africa, Ireland and New Zealand. New Zealand just had to hold on against Ireland. South Africa just had to hold on against France. And they can. They kick it out. Game is over. South Africa get the win. And set themselves up with a semi-final against England. Which is a replay of last World Cup's final, which is huge. What a game. I felt kind of exhausted, and I didn't even have a horse in that race, really. I would love to see the All Blacks taken on South Africa in a final to see who can get the fourth World Cup first. I would have loved to take on the French, because it would have been a, like a reverse of 2011, where we hosted them in a final. So I was kind of happy either way, but what a massive game. Run meters finished 5-12 to 4-19 to France. France have 59% possession. 63% territory, 12 clean breaks to 5, 42 defenders beaten to 12. But man, the stats don't do it justice for that. The way the South Africans did that line speed, like that shows, I think, in the amount of missed tackles they have is when they just shoot out. They may only get a hand to you, but they disrupt. They push them backwards, which is the key point, not necessarily making a tackle, but forcing guys to pass under pressure and you end up going backwards. The high balls were great. France really struggled with them. Um, South Africa ended up making 163 tackles to 92. So a big, big defensive shift. Scrum ended up getting them some good pay across the course of the game as well. I mean, Malvaka finishes with two clean breaks and five defenders beaten. Gets himself a try. Aldridge has nine from nine tackles. But, I mean, Colby, 126 metres, two clean breaks, five defenders beaten. Creel, 13 from 16 tackles. He was bloody everywhere. Set up one of the tries as well. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. French fans, pour yourself a glass of wine. Uh, South African fans, I'm sure you're already into the clippies and coke by this point. I've been partaking in that drink myself, to be honest. It's not a bad drop, but yes. We now know the four quarterfinalists. Four quarterfinalists. Four semi-finalists. England to take on South Africa. Argentina to take on New Zealand. Just England flying the hopes of the Northern Hemisphere campaign for the World Cup. But yeah. You guys let us know your thoughts on the game. Congratulations, South Africa. See how far you guys can go. And commiserations, France. Sucks to go out in your home World Cup, but that was a tough quarterfinal. Like the Irish game, I would say, worthy of a final, worthy of a semifinal, or just the way the draw worked. That was in the quarters. But yeah. You guys let us know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.